Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where you know I had so much fun last week detailing a gruesome porter for the gruesome gulch layout that I've decided to do another one. And where last time it was a locomotive to run on the lower loop down inside Cadaver Caverns, this time I want to work on engine number one to run on the upper loop with the gruesome gulch excursion cars. This is an ON30 Bachman 040 Porter with uh, digital command control on board and sound. So this is the one we're going to be converting today. And I think the first thing I want to add to this is a tender for carrying fuel. So to start this project off, I've got a long four-wheel tender frame from the Cumberland Shops. I've already uh, laser cut a deck out of some 1 16th of an inch thick basswood plywood and scribed some six inch wide boards in there and that'll ride right on top of the frame like that. But you may also notice this shape etched into the deck. Yes, the tender is going to be shaped like a coffin. And the entire tender is going to be uh, three inches long or that's uh, 12 scale feet in O scale and an inch and a half wide or six scale feet. And the first thing I want to do is add a pair of braces to the underside here. Got some six by eight stock. So I just need to measure and cut those. So glue those on each side using some yellow carpenter's glue. Now I can go ahead and glue the frame in with some CA. And I will paint this entire assembly with some uh, flat black primer. These are um, basically iron strapping. The, the tender itself is going to be made, the sides are going to be made of wood, but it's going to have this iron strapping around the outside. And I laser etched these with uh, rivet detail. Let me uh, give you a close up here so you can see. And that's done just by you know, etching it with a laser, etching away everything that is not the head of a rivet. So this is some uh, 25 thou laser board that I used. Now I'm using a scotch Brite pad on here to remove the char off of there. And now these can be painted flat black also. Now with the primer dry on all these, I'm going to dry brush on some medium to light grays to bring out that rivet detail. There you can see it now a little better. And I'll use that same gray to bring out the detail in these uh, side frames also. And on the car ends as well. I said earlier that the sides were going to be made out of wood and that's, you know, they're going to look like wood. <laughs> but they're not going to actually be wood. They're going to be printed paper. And this is the same exact technique I used on my coffin car, that little gondola that I made. And I'm, so I did the same thing. I created the graphics in Adobe Photoshop and printed them out on some um, high quality matte photo paper. And now I'll use some uh, 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to mount this to the back of some Crescent 300 illustration board. And now I can just cut these out, going right through the printed paper and through the illustration board. And now I can start putting these riveted frames on. Start with this end piece. Now I'll paint all the back sides and the edges with some flat black acrylic. I'm going to start assembling this now by adding the rear panel to the deck first. I've added a little 6x6 six six brace down at the bottom to help it stand up straight. Then I'll put these side pieces on next. Now, this should fit really nicely 
right in between. Now the last panel, make sure those edges meet up. Now I made an end piece and glued it in place, and this is just made from the uh, piece of the leftover car sides. Now I've got a piece of this uh, one inch polystyrene foam, and my plan is to cut and shape it into a coal load that will fit inside of there. This should just take a minute or two. I'll just paint the top with some diluted white glue. And sprinkle on some crushed coal. Now I'll set this aside to dry for a few minutes and I can work on some grab irons and handrails. Just use my uh, twist drill. Go through the car sides here with uh, this is a number 76 bit. Bend this end down and use a sharpie to mark. Now I can just push this into the holes and use CA to hold it on the back. And we'll do the same thing again over on this side. And I'll add one here on the back of the tender also. And you go. There we go. Now I'll come back and paint these with a little bit of uh, Vallejo metallic black. For this four-wheel frame, uh, the Cumberland Shops recommends some uh, KDHO 532 36-inch wheels. If I can pop these in here. And for a coupler, I've got a KD Magnematic, what is this, a 148 whisker coupler. Already have the draft gear box ready to go, so all I need to do is screw it on just like that. But I am going to trim off the uh, magnetic trick trip pin because we don't use those on the Gruesome Gulch. Snip that right off. Before I get too much further on this, I want to test out and uh, make sure the drawbar works between the locomotive and the tender. Um, the one that comes with this frame from the Cumberland Shops, I'm afraid, is a little too short to negotiate the sharp curves on the Gruesome Gulch. So uh, this is one from my scrap box. I believe this is from an old Bachman uh, ON3260. And I'll put one end here in the coupler pocket. As you can see, this one has two holes in it. And the outer one is for very sharp curves. So I'm going to try the inner one first and see if that works. See if that's close enough. All right, that works great. We'll go with that. We'll go ahead and drop the coal load in. Okay, that's all coming together nicely. But I think I want to set the tender aside for a few minutes because now I want to work on building a cab to match. This has got four little screws that hold it on in order to remove those. Here you can see there's the decoder. And the speaker is over on this side. I want to reuse the bell and pop that out. And I'm going to take some measurements off of this and um, laser cut a new cab. And here we are a few hours later. And I've got all the parts I need to build a cab. It's just like magic. Using my scotch Bright pad here to clean off the char once again because I uh, added some rivet detail around the sides of the cab. So this is going to nicely match the tender, I think, when all is said and done. And as usual, I'm doing a little uh, pre-assembly before painting. And as I glue these pieces on, I'm constantly, you know, dry fitting, you know, 
just to check the corners, make sure everything's going to line up properly. And now I can paint. Blue, black. All right, paint is dry. Time to start putting this together. Let's start with the uh, front wall of the cab because everything is pretty much going to key into that. Now a little glue in this corner and I can fit the inner side wall. Check the square and do the other side. And for the back wall of the cab, this gets glued onto this. Then I can put these side frames on. Pay special attention to these corners. Make sure everything lines up just so. And this side. Before I get much further, I want to go ahead and glaze these windows. A lot easier to do from inside the cab before you get it fully assembled. Cut uh, some pieces of uh, clear acetate for that. Just gluing them in with some zap canopy glue. For these oval windows on the sides of the cab, I really like the way that the leaded windows turned out on uh, porter number two. So I'm going to use the same technique again. I've uh, cut some pieces out of some 15 thou laser board. Uh, painted them black. And I'm going to adhere these to some acetate with some spray adhesive, and then I will just cut out around the outside edge and glue them in. And I want these to be fogged windows. So I'll use the old scotch tape trick once again. There we go. Now just flip them over, and I'll cut them out with my hobby knife. Now those get glued in right behind these oval openings. And now before I uh, put the back wall on and button all this up, I want to paint the interior a dark blue gray, just like I did on the, uh, the other cab. And with that done, I can glue the back wall the rear wall of the cab into place. It should fit nicely right down into these slots. And then I've got a couple of roof ribs that fit down in these slots. I think I'll go ahead and add the name to the side of the cab while I'm at it. Once again, we've got kind of a punny name. This is the You Are Doomed. <laughs> and I've uh, printed the graphic out on some matte photo paper. I'm going to spray some Super 77 on the back. And we'll adhere that to a piece of Bristol board to give it a little bit of weight and thickness. And now with a new sharp number 11 blade in my hobby knife. I'll just cut a couple of these out. Now I'll paint the edges black. I'll paint a little white glue on the back. And I can apply one to each side. Now I want to do a little dry brushing on here to bring out the detail, particularly these rivets using the same colors I used on the tender, kind of a medium gray. Everything I want to add a little bit of an accent to. Okay, time for the roof. Get some glue on all of these supports. And I've cut the roof out of some 15 thou laser board. Again, this is going to call for some lengthy finger clamping. With a little circular bracket for the whistle. And then the whistle itself recycled from the Bachman cab. 
I'll do a little chalk weathering up here on the roof to dull that down a little bit. Now I'll use some music wire to make handrails just like I did on the uh, tender. Just a little dab of CA on the ends of the wire. Not bad. I like it. You know, I almost forgot to make steps for the tender. But uh, fortunately, I remembered and uh, cut some out of some 35 thou laser board. Just a couple of drops of CA here and there. It fits together just like that. Set that aside. Let that dry for a second. Okay, we got these steps all together. Painted them flat black. Added some nut bolt washer castings and did a little dry brushing. Which means now it's time to put them on. One on each side, right up here at the front, and two here in the back. And that should do it. With the cab and the tender mostly done, I want to do a little bit of work on the saddle tank, I think. I want to paint it, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off. There's four little Phillips head screws that hold it on. And there's the fourth one. And then I can uh, carefully pull the sand lines out from the sand dome. I can just lift that off. And pull the handrail off too. Now on these uh, sound equipped O4Os, there's a capacitor that's hidden up inside the sand dome. Really clever how they did that, actually. And the sand dome lid is a separately applied piece. You can pop that off. The hard part is the bell. I think I'll do what I did uh, last time. I'm just going to mask that bell off because I don't want to risk breaking it. Let's see if I can't mask off the center part of the sand dome. Because I'd like to keep that shiny black. I'm going to be painting the rest of the tank uh, with that coastal blue to match the cab and the excursion cars. Oh, nice. Now I'll use some Vallejo metallic black on this bell cradle. Trying to figure out a stack for this. I've been trying a lot of different options. And what I've decided on is, I uh, see I want something a little unusual. And I've got a couple of different stacks here from the Cumberland shops. I really like the shape of this one, but it's not tall enough. So I've got a capped stack here, which I also like. And I'm going to cut the cap off of this, cut the bottom of this off, and I'm going to put these two together to create an all-new stack. Since I've made the cab a little bit taller, I need to make the stack a little taller also. I want to add a number plate to the front of the smoke box too. This was an undecorated uh, porter, so it just had a, a blank red one. And unfortunately I broke it off <laughs> while I was trying to remove it. Uh, but I think I can drill this out and then replace it with a Grantline number plate. This is locomotive number one. There's number one right there. Instead of the usual red, I painted this flat black in keeping with the theme. <laughs> now I need to just uh, very carefully pick out the outer rim and the number with some brass. This is some Vallejo brass. Using a 4-0 brush, taking my time. All right, I think that's about the best I can do on something like that. There we go.
Let's get some numbers on this tank using some Woodland Scenics dry transfers. Just shove the capacitor back up inside of the sand dome. And nestle this back into its spot here. And you go. And I'll put the lid back on the sand dome. Fit the sand lines back into their holes. Now I can replace the handrail. I've got a brass one here that I'm going to use instead of the stock one. The stack fits a little bit more loosely than I would like. See, it's got that wobble in it. And I don't want to attach it with a screw, and I don't want to... Well, I can't attach it with a screw. I can't get through there now. Um, I don't want to glue it on. So I am filling this end with some Phototech putty. Phototech putty is just this waxy stuff used uh, by photographers to, to keep things in place on, on sets during shoots. So I can make this just a nice press fit and then pull this off again if I ever need to. We should be good to go. I'll fit the cab back on. Sometimes these wires down here to the uh, decoder, they like to sneak out underneath. You just got to push them back in there. Now a locomotive needs an engineer. And I've got just the candidate. I think he'll be perfect. This is a figure from Model Tech Studios that was very kindly given to me by a, uh, a Patreon member. Thank you, Tom. And one of the reasons I made the cab taller so this guy would actually fit. I don't know how you operate a locomotive with that size in your hand, but he manages it somehow. All right, we are in the home stretch of this build. There's just a couple more things I want to do. I want to go around and uh, dry brush uh, the cylinders and the front and rear pilot with a little bit of gray to uh, bring the details out in those and dull the plastic shine down a little bit. Do a little bit of weathering with chalks, and then there's a a few special details I want to add to finish it off. I want to add a little bit more personality to this front pilot also by uh, adding some real wood uh, boards. This is some 1 32nd of an inch thick uh, scribed basswood. I painted it a weathered gray. And I think this this little sidestep on the on the side of the tank is a little wimpy, so I'm going to beef it up with a uh, piece of one by eight. That'll match this front deck here nicely. On the tender, I want to replace the drawbar screw with just a length of uh, brass rod. That way, I can just lift the tender off and on. Now, I'll mix up a little bit of five minute epoxy. Use that to uh, secure that rod in the hole. And let that set up in there, and we should be good to go. Now this is some fine jeweler's chain that I picked up down at my local discount store. Wrap it around the front headlight here. Have it hanging off of here, kind of like Marley's ghost, you know. Use a couple of drops of CA to keep this where I want it. Now I'll do just a little bit of weathering on this with some chalks. Use some black. Make sure there's no shiny spots showing from the glue. And a little bit of orange to represent rust. Pop the cab back off so I can add a bell cord. Need to drill a hole up here near the roof line. Take some black thread. Poke it through the hole. Now I'll tie a knot in this end so it can't pull back through. Now I'll fit this back on and glue it to the handle of the bell cradle. Now 
I can snip off the excess right there. And I'll use some diluted white glue on here to stiffen that bell cord, make it hold that shape. Okay, I can see that that epoxy has cured. So we can test out the drawbar peg. Oh yeah, that's going to work nicely. I thought it would be kind of fun to have some bones mixed in with the coal back here. So I've got a Mini Prince skeleton. And this is the guy. This guy was the original engineer. He's been demoted. <laughs> and his head right back here. I'm breaking him up so it can look like, you know, perhaps the bones of several different individuals. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, God. I'm going to repel this down here. Nice, downright gruesome. And one final little detail. I've got a shovel from uh, Keith Wiseman, Wiseman Model Services. It's a white metal casting. And I have perched a mini Prince Raven up on top. And with that, I'd say this project is done. Let's take her out for a spin, shall we? Well, I got to tell you, I am very pleased with the way that locomotive number one for Gruesome Gulch turned out, and I hope you enjoyed the build too. If you did, please like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell to see more from Thunder Mesa Studio, because we do have a few more projects coming down the pike for Gruesome Gulch, and you don't want to miss those. Until then, you can also follow us over on Instagram at thunder.mesa, and see what's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can do what these great folks did and go over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.